Super simple. All you do is take a utility knife. Okay, here's our demo equipment. Boxes. That makes me excited to check them out. Hey guys, I have a lot of things piling up around the house from various projects, a laundry list of things that I want to get done, some videos that I want to make for you guys. So I just spent some time in the office nerding out on my to-do list tendencies, brain dumping everything first into a checklist. I like to highlight all my boxes. That makes me excited to check them off. I don't know why. Sometimes it's the small things. Trying to group them together into what I can do today, what I want to do tomorrow with Travis's help. And today we are prioritizing part two of the interior doors makeover project, which is quickly spiraling into the hallway makeover of my dreams. I'll be sharing every step of the process in today's video, along with all of the mistakes that I made and lessons learned. Back in the guest room, this door is clearly not prepared for the new mortise lock set. So I just stick it in the hole. Usually at least that box fits in, at least in my experience so far. Draw a little line around it. Now I've got my guide. As long as I can chip out the little border line, I'll be able to fit it in easily. And I won't need to reverse this latch, but I will need to get in and do that on a couple of the other doors. I just use the multi-tool to chip away at it. Let's do this. Appalachian sunrise meets my skin. Even with my eyes still closed, I can feel it coming in. Golden, I'll follow It's definitely the bottom part that doesn't want to go in. I think we just need to go deeper. After a lot of whittling down, it now finally fits. It's time to make the holes for the door pin and the keyhole fit. We're getting closer. <laughs> this is all going to get covered with hardware anyway. And honestly, those are so big, I might as well just use the multi-tool for that as well, especially this bottom one. If you haven't checked out my vlog channel yet, I made a little special home for behind the scenes, daily life, concert obsessions, everything else that's going on, materials, shopping videos, that kind of stuff here on the main channel, my DIY design channel. I'll be sharing all of our big house projects, makeovers, renovations, DIYs, everything here every week. in the hallway and I'm very excited to start this project. It's time to demo out all the old wood trim. I am just really, really getting serious about home safety when it comes to DIY. I don't want to be one of those DIYers that makes a very silly and preventable error. I was researching how to best make sure you're getting through the layers of paint. I'm almost certain that this exterior wood casing was put in by the last owner or the owner before that and is relatively new. I am going to go ahead and lead test the front though before I remove these and the inside of the door casing as that may have been here longer. Since our home was built in 1952, it is possible that lead paint was used in construction originally, so I just wanna use an abundance of caution. Keep your fingers crossed for me. <laughs> Super simple. All you do is take a utility knife and cut diagonally, making sure to get all the way down to the wood grain and exposing what may be layers of paint. I'm gonna do that again here on this trim that I do plan to remove. 
Very simple. One thing I'm noticing right away is we're not dealing with lots of layers of paint here, which is a great sign. Now we're gonna take the swab. I just wetted it, rub it on the area for 30 seconds. We're looking for any pink or red pigment. Should be fairly obvious from my experience so far. The swab is still goldenrod in color, so we can assume no lead is present. You can get lead testing strips at your local hardware store. These are the ones I found on Amazon. I'll link them in the description box down below. Here's our demo equipment. We've got ear protection, chisels, hammer, mallet, blade knife, crowbar, eye protection, and of course, our best friend, the tape measure, so we can measure for the new woodwork. I'm so excited. Taking out the door casings is a lot easier than you might think. Don't forget your safety glasses first. Scoring is your best friend, so make sure you have a utility knife, maybe with a little comfort grip. And the first thing you wanna do is cut the seam of your latex paint. It really does create quite a seal, especially if you did caulking, which you should always do. And this is gonna make wall repair a lot easier once we pull the trim off. If you're using a hammer, don't forget to use a little ear protection. I'm terrible at this, but I'm trying to use it. I don't wanna, you know, not be able to hear people in my life. <laughs> <laughs> now, I love this little woodworking chisel. Not really sure what this one's called, but I'll find it and link it down below. It's one of my favorites, especially for demo. It's small. It's got little hooks on it, different shapes to get really into crevices. I find it super easy. The crowbar, which has got that great pulling action. Oh, already coming out great. Now, time for the crowbar. Now that I've gotten it up a little bit, I can wedge it under there. Work my way kind of down the door frame. Pull gently. I get a little uh, in, you know, impatient too, but if you really jackhammer it, you might pop a hole in your wall that then you're gonna have to waste time going back to fix. So just slow, slow your roll, okay? It's okay to slow down. I'm mostly talking to myself here, but you might be like me, so now you know. Now it is nice to get a new trim like this one. It's the same width as the one that you are replacing. That's not it, that's the window trim. But still, uh, that way you won't have a ton of repair work to do. It's gonna save time. Oh, we forgot to use the score at the top. Don't forget to score both sides, which is why we let test in both of these. Continue that with the trim all around the doors, leaving the baseboards. We're gonna build off of those. Let's get this done. of the trim pieces. So I'll need to figure out something custom that's gonna tuck into the corner here and you won't even see it. Definitely wanna keep these boards to use as measuring tools. The battery on my camera is about to die. We're playing musical items here in the office just to sit down and film this, but finally have all the door casings down. Now it's time to start putting the new ones up. I'm just gonna do that and reveal it tomorrow morning. I'm so excited to start painting in the hallway.
I'm so excited to have taken down all the old door casings. Now we're starting to put the new pieces up. First things first, I measured and cut the top portions. Actually, it was really easy using the old ones as a template. I just traced them with a pencil, cut with my measure saw, always place the top part of the door casing first. After that, it's time to measure from the outside corner of the top piece all the way to the floor, and that should give me a base measurement so that I can quickly cut all the side pieces at once and then bring them in and install them quickly. I am a little bit ambitious. It's getting a little later in the day, but I am excited. I think I'm going to keep going, see if I can get all the side rails put up. <sighs> Wish me luck. Through a little bit of trial and error, I have found the best way for me to put these up, especially working by myself. Using my brad nailer, I just like to put one nail at the very top middle. That way I can use my level and make sure that it's perfectly straight before I put the rest of the nails in. I had one that I had to take out because I put it just slightly crooked and I'm a perfectionist so I had to go back and fix it. Now this is my new method so I don't have that happen again. Okay, which one I want to put the one that's in. Measure where I want it to go. One in the top middle. Now I can use my level. Make sure it's just right. It's the next day and per usual, I have made my house a mess in pursuit of beauty and perfection. I'm so excited about the trim work on the bathroom door. It's the most visible and it is so beautiful. I got the tops put up for most of the others, linen closet, including this funky little cut that I had to do in the corner. I'm gonna need to borrow hopefully my in-laws table saw to make the cut on the trim piece for the side because it's so narrow, but this one's up. Oh my gosh, look how pretty they look together and then we started getting them up here in the office as well above the closet and I'm getting so excited for painting so the best route that I read about is to measure and cut and install the top portion first because the sides are much easier to cut and generally you want the sides to be millimeters off the floor anyway so it's okay if the measurements just slightly off you just match it up with the top like I've done here with this corner came out so beautifully and I'm really proud of it and generally speaking you don't want to cut the mitered side you just want to cut the flat side on the bottom so that it's perfectly with your measurements I'm also trying to figure out what I want to do for the extension on the baseboard or if I just want to replace the baseboard altogether. But I really liked what we did with extending the baseboards here in the guest room. I think that's possible to do something in the hallway similar, less work, less money. And speaking of doors and organization, I've been trying to figure out what I want to do for door hooks since I don't want to drill into the doors. These are such a great option. These ones are from Command, but you can probably find these from lots of different brands. I really love the brass. They're real metal and they're going to easily fit on the back of the door so that we can hang a robe or a towel or obviously with the guest room want to give guests a place to hang a jacket. So I think that's going to work out great. And you can remove them anytime if you change your mind. And since all of our doors have mortise locks and these beautiful wall plates, I thought it might be kind of weird if the linen closet didn't have that even though it doesn't have a mortise lock cut. So I'm thinking about just ordering plates and using a regular doorknob. I found from the same company that makes our mortise lock sets this standard handle set, also glass doorknobs. And then I found this tool that's supposed to help you drill into the door. So there's a cavity for the bar to go through. And then the strike plate. I'll be interested to see if this stuff works the way that I think it's going to. 
the doors that I bought were clearly a mistake. They are not right, and I am gonna return them. This was the right door. It's the Masonite solid core bifold single panel door. So it's essentially gonna match the salvage doors for the most part as close as I can. It's a nice solid door and it's primed and it's ready to paint. And I think it will just overall make more sense. Installation on these closet doors is super simple. They come with directions, but essentially we're gonna put in the retractable pin, the roller pin, And on the other side, the stationary pin that's gonna go in the base hardware, which is right there. Now this base is adjustable. Make sure to follow the directions that come with your particular set of bifold doors, but essentially the stationary pin goes in the track in the bottom. The two retractable pins go in the track at the top. Door is officially up, you guys. It looks so good. Let's see how it matches the single panel style of the salvage doors. Hey, Kelly. I think I'm gonna use, oops. I think I'm gonna use these Ikea little brass knobs. They were so affordable. I don't know, I think they'll be kind of cute. Saves me a trip returning them. of lightning pouring rain crescent moon has taken itself far away to lay down one more lazy dream I can't sleep they used to cook now you and me we was thicker than blood but the sky's in the dark And got inside of me I still hear the words you told me Baby, gonna be so lonely When I'm gone But it isn't true I was just as lonely with you I guess I always will be Someday soon I'm gonna go Back behind the clouds. Things are looking good. I'm so excited. To some of you, this might seem like a really subtle change, but to me, it's everything. This particular edge trim for the door casing on the linen closet is narrower than the rest, so I'll have to use my in-law's table saw to trim it down so that it fits. Honestly, it works out okay because that'll make it easier to paint in there for today. After cutting the vertical pieces of the door casings with my miter saw in the wood shop, it's time to secure them in place and I'm so excited to see this hallway makeover come together. First I run a length of liquid nails, heavy duty of course, along the wood trim before affixing it to the wall. Luckily liquid nails does have a little bit of a drying time which makes it sort of movable as you ensure that it's level before securing it in place with your rod nailer. Don't forget to take a moment and use a little scraper like this. Remove all the old caulking before installing the new wood trim. I did that painstakingly, but of course, inevitably, I forgot some sections, so just have this on hand. It just makes everything go smoother, literally smoother. <laughs> How long does the present last? before ending my very busy work day is giving all of the wood trim door casings a light sanding in preparation for priming and painting tomorrow. Oh. 
it is very exciting to finally get the primer on the walls and I can't even begin to tell you the immense change this has brought to the whole house. It's really brightened up the space and I cannot believe I'm painting it white yet again, but I'm really excited to show you my big plans for the new paint job. It's the next day and of course I'm back in the hallway and look at how different this space feels. I'm really excited because I'm finally getting the last coat on the walls. Since I was painting late, of course I missed some spots so I'm going back with my trim brush, cutting in and making sure that there's not a single shadow of navy blue left behind. I have a lot more painting to do after this, going back in with the semi-gloss on all of the new door casings and the doors. And I also have a very exciting idea planned with a very bold color choice. Just when I thought I was done, yes, that's me scraping the brand new paint on the walls. Once I painted the hallway white, I was able to see all of the insane over texturing that has been done to these walls over the many years it's been here. So many different wall repairs. I found pretty much every old abandoned drywall anchor that had sort of a poor patching job. I just could not look at it anymore. It didn't feel like I was enjoying the fruits of all my labor. So going back, taking a minute to scrape it all down sounds crazy, but honestly was probably the best decision for me. Let's talk new paint job. It's fresh and white now, but the first idea is just to paint the ceiling and the doors on either end of the hallway. The second and more possibly creative choice is to paint not only the ceiling and doors, but the walls around and above those doors on either end of the hallway to make the space feel larger and limitless. I like the idea of it being a little bit more modern and interesting, not something you'd see in every home, but of course, wondering if I might regret it once I live with it for a while so let me know down in the comments what you think i should do as i am still trying to make this decision make sure to check out my vlog channel at lindsay living vlogs here on youtube and subscribe so you don't miss the next chapter in my hallway makeover Thanks so much for watching all the way to the end of the video. If you haven't yet, make sure to like and subscribe, share this with a friend, and make sure that you come on back next weekend for the next chapter. Until then, I'll probably be in this hallway, touch up painting from here to eternity. See you next week.